Welcome back to Create Craft Costume, where we think creating or crafting is as close to magic as we are going to get. I am Ashley, the geeky trained apprentice, and this is Cheryl, our resident fabric wizard. Hello. And she is showing us real magic today because this tutorial is going to show you how to go from this. to this. This is that much of a space saving option if you plan everything out well. And just because we are launching during Halloween, we have actually made interchangeable pillowcases for all 12 months. Yes. She, she likes pillows. I love pillows. I say we very loosely because this was all Cheryl's idea. I just got to film it. <laughs> so let's get sewing. This is an example of some of the seasonal pillow covers that we have made. We purposely planned this with an envelope back so that you only have to store the covers, meaning you can make as many as you want instead of having to store the pillows. Obviously you can leave these plain fabric or we will show you how to decorate these later in the video. This is the template that we are going to be using. We are taking one yard of standard 45 inch fabric and we are cutting two pieces from it. One is 21 inches long, one is 15 inches long. After we cut the selvages and the folds, you're actually ready to put your pillowcase together. Because we are adamant on maximizing our fabric and we do not like leftovers, we're offering you two options on making your pillows. Option one of 45 inch wide fabric is one yard, which makes one pillow cover you will have one 21 inch square of your fabric left over. If you're okay with that, great. Go with option one. If you're not, go with option two. Buy two yards of 45 inch fabric. That will give you two pillow covers and two 21 inch square pieces that will give you another project that we will talk to you later in the video. They can be coordinating fabric, complementary fabrics, or even the same color. Whatever you want to do with your pillows is totally fine. Make sure you pre-shrink and dry your fabric and then refold the fabric with the selvages together like it was on the bolt. Lay it flat, you are ready to cut. And that's why you see us cutting multiple fabrics here we are making several coordinating pillow covers. Okay, the fabric is folded, selvages together. I like to fold it in half again. It makes for easier, quicker cutting. Also, if you need to square up that first beginning edge, do that now and then make your first cut at 15 inches. And you will see her do this on selvages and lots of other areas. And I am showing this because I never did it before I met her. And it's a better way to cut fabric. Make your first cut at 15 inches. Again, we do not use the selvages, so trim off those selvages and cut along the fold. Okay, so now the two back pieces are cut, ready to sew. You can see here, this is how they go together. One folds over on top of the other, making the envelope. We'll talk about how much they're turned under when we get ready to sew. Okay, since we had a yard of fabric, our remaining piece is 21 inches. So all we are going to do is cut off the selvages and the folds. Side note on that, I don't trust the selvages, that's why we always cut those off. The fold, even though you press out the crease, sometimes it has a tendency to come back because it's on the, on the bolt so long. Also, I don't like to use it because if you have fabric that are, are vivid or brightly colored or dark fabrics, that dye can fade a little bit along the fold. So if at all possible, I prefer not to use the fold. Now, you will have two pieces of 21 inch fabric squares. You only need one for the pillow. That second piece can be combined with another piece that we will show you later in the video to make another project. Or if you did not choose two yards, you are just left over with another 21 inch piece. There you go. <laughs> Here's a quick side note about directional fabric. The cutting is going to be the same on any type of fabric, but depending on which way your pattern goes, you may need to change the direction of the envelope like you see here. Instead of going horizontally, we have to place this one vertically to maximize the aesthetics. Before we actually sew the pillow, we are going to add some interfacing to the front of the pillow only. 
We're putting it on the front because that's going to give us a nice crisp look. This is the kind that we prefer. It is an iron-on, medium weight. It's great adhesive. It, has, it wears well. We're not interfacing the back because we need that more pliable to be able to put the pillow in and out. And because we are making multiple pillow covers, I'm going to cut multiple pieces of 21 inch length while we're right here cutting another one. As you can see, we're running to the end of this bolt. I will use this interfacing just not on a large pillow front like this. I will save these pieces that are creased on the bolt for facings, the inside of cuffs or collars, where if that crease doesn't come out entirely, it's not going to show and it's not going to leave a mark. You might also wonder, why are we piecing in the next shot? It is because this bolt is only 20 inches wide. So we have to cut at least two pieces of interfacing that you can then seam together at the ironing board, as you will see. Alrighty, it's my favorite time, interfacing and pressing. It does make a difference. Again, the biggest thing to understand with interfacing, particularly adhesive or iron-on interfacing, the adhesive side goes down on the wrong side of the fabric. And if you make that mistake, you'll only make it once because you'll be paying for a new iron. You will. You will. You can usually make sure of the adhesive by feeling it. The one that we're showing you has a very, very textured surface, so you can make no mistake that that goes on the wrong side of your fabric. If you're using a different kind of interfacing, it will usually have a shine. So make sure that goes down on the wrong side of your fabric. Always use a medium or a wool setting. All of us have made the mistake of putting it on linen. I'm there too. Do it not do that. It takes twice as long. And it won't be, you won't get what you want. Just use, don't go higher than wool. Just don't go higher than wool. I always use a pressing cloth. Doesn't really matter what kind. If you want to use the gauze like I'm showing you here, you've got the rayon ones, you've got cheesecloth, whatever. But use a pressing cloth. Make it very, very wet. I usually use a squirt bottle, dampen the pressing cloth, put it over the interfacing, and then start in the middle of the project and work to the sides. Spending about mm, five to ten seconds in each spot to adhere that adhesive. After you go through the whole project, go over it again after you remove the pressing cloth and make sure all the pieces are, you don't see any little places that aren't a different color, they're usually lighter. Then I always turn it over to the right side and press it again. On this one, it's not long enough. You can piece, piece interfacing as long as you overlap the two pieces. That is very critical. If you don't, you won't get a nice seam. Just overlap the two pieces, iron it down, and you are good to go on interfacing. And now it's time to sew! Yay! Now it's time to start construction. As a reminder, this is what the back of our pillow looks like. We are taking those two 15 inch pieces and we need to add hems to them so that is, it is enclosed and we can place the pillow inside. One of the pieces needs to have the hem at the bottom and one of the 15 inch pieces needs to have the hem at the top. Before you mark the hems, you wanna make sure that you are paying attention to the pattern on your fabric and that it is running the way you want it to before you sew it. In order to complete these hems, you are gonna fold it over two inches and then fold it though that two inches, you're gonna fold that under again by half an inch. That's how we're gonna enclose the entire seam. Yes, we want it wide and we are also going to sew two seams to reinforce that. You will see here we go, we sew that half an inch seam down first, then we flip it around and we go down the other side. That just helps reinforce it as we're pulling that pillow in and out. Okay, now you've done the same thing on the other side. Both of the backs are ready to attach to the front piece. Back at the cutting table, you put your front piece face up, right side up, right direction up. You're going to take the first top piece of the back, put it down on right sides together on the front of the pillow. Then you're going to put the bottom piece on, overlapping that on top of the top back piece. This is very important because this is how your pillow is going to get in and you want the top back to overlap the bottom back. And that's so your pillow doesn't slip out. Yeah. But this is as important of a note as pinning the zipper to the right side 
if you don't know that story, please see the baby gift video that I will link <laughs> below. So think about what you're doing is what she's saying. Because I didn't. Okay, so now we'll go sew that. I may have messed up pinning one of the pillows off camera, but I was at least paying attention to how easy this construction was. You're done. You're taking that whole pinned masterpiece to the sewing machine and, and you're sewing one straight line. You're, you're gonna start, you sew a half inch straight seam, then you're gonna finish it off in whatever way that you deem we did a zigzag stitch. And then we're gonna talk about clipping. So back at the cutting table, we're gonna trim down that seam, but not a lot. We're gonna trim off the extra. We are gonna be very, very careful that we do not clip the zigzagging or the overstitch or the, whatever stitch you use. We don't wanna cut any of those stitches. Now, on other projects, you will always clip the corners diagonally, not on this one. Pillows are typically picked up by the corner. Having that extra fabric in the corner is going to strengthen that corner so it won't pull out. Also, stuffing is usually not always up into the corners, so having a little bit of extra fabric is going to fill that corner up as well. So on these pillows, do not cut the corner off diagonally. Just leave it square. Now you're gonna turn your pillow right side out. You're done. That really is it. Your pillow is done. I personally would never cover up this fabric, but that is a choice that you may do so. And in the next couple clips, we are going to show you four ways that you can spiffy, spiffy up. up. <laughs> yes, change, <laughs> enhance your wonderful pillow covers, starting with fabric panels. I used to think they were something that you only put on the wall. Cheryl has definitely enlightened me, and we are back to our beginning pillow because this circle was a fabric panel that she cut out we applied it with heat and bond, and then we put a decorative stitching on the outside edge, which PS is actually what you should not do. And we will talk about that in a future example. While heat and bond is certainly an option, we have two additional ways that you can use fabric panels in your pillow covers. One is using the fabric panel entirely. We took this ice skater girl and cut it to the front measurements of the pillow. We still added the interfacing on the back and then we just need to cut two additional 15 inch pieces out of whatever coordinating fabric that you would like to use. Next, you if the fabric panel is not large enough, you can still apply portions of it. And for this tree panel, we mounted it on a fabric square that was the size we needed and we are going to mount it with something called stitch witchery. Yes, also a, a thing I didn't know before, Cheryl. We are using Stitch Witchery here. It is a light adhesive. It's been around for decades. It wears well. It's easy to use. It is applied much like the Pellon interfacing. You just put it between the two fabrics you're trying to fuse together, iron it on in a medium setting. We are putting this around all four edges, about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch away from the edge because as you sew on this, the stitch witchery if it's to the edge, it will tend to gum up and dull your needle. So we're putting it away from the edge, leaving space to do a machine embroidery stitch around the edge to seal those edges. And just make it pretty. And it does make it pretty. Just a little accent to, to frame the picture. We wanted this to look a little rustic, so we chose the double cross stitch uh, setting on our machine, but literally any stitch will work. Um, zigzag, straight <laughs> stitch, we just like to use the decorative stitches that our machines can do, spiffs it up a little. And those are the three ways that we used the different fabric panels in our seasonal pillows. So now we are going to move on to heat and bond. Hello, Heat and Bond. It is an iron-on adhesive. It is a strong adhesive. We are using the Ultra Hold. There's two ways to buy it that we have found. One is in the one yard packages, or the second one is in the 75 yard box that we bought. Don't invest that much until you decide if you like it. We are real big fans, but make that decision before you make the investment. It is applied with a low heat and you apply it to the fabric and then you cut out the piece of fabric. So it's a little bit different. When you look at a piece of heat and bond, it is very shiny on the adhesive side and it has a rough texture. That is the side that you iron to the wrong side of whatever you're going to apply. 
So much like the interfacing, if you make that mistake, you're buying a new iron. You are with this stuff. This is tough stuff. Make sure on this one that you cut the heat and bond slightly larger than the, than the fabric you're adhering it to. Okay, now to ironing. Heat and bond is very different than the others. Here you iron on the paper side. So you're going to make sure you iron on the paper, down on the fabric. And as you go through this, again, start in the middle, go to the edges like you normally would with Pellon. As you look at it, you can see that the color will change as it is adhering. So if you can see a place that is not sealed tightly, just go over it again. Then when you turn it to the right side to iron it again, make sure when you go close to the edges, because the heat and bond is cut slightly larger, that you don't go off onto the heat and bond because it will jump right up and bite your iron. I know this from experience, it's not pretty. So be very careful. Once that's adhered on your fabric, you can cut that into any design you wish. We are going to cut it into a Christmas tree. Okay, so what we've done now is we have applied the adhesive with the first ironing to the back of the fabric we are going to apply to the front of the pillow. We've cut out our Christmas tree. As we pull off the paper back, it's very shiny. That is the side that goes down onto the front of the pillow. If you do it the other way around, you have got a nightmare. So it's the shiny side goes down onto the pillow. Christmas trees have trunks. So we made a little trunk out of this ribbon, a little scrap we had. We're going to tuck that up underneath the Christmas tree and then we are going to iron that down. So the trunk will be fused to the tree as well. Back to the iron. Okay, one last word about heat and bond. You cannot sew through it. I know I did on the Halloween pillow and I naively chose to do a decorative stitch. It was a long way around that pillow and several needles. Don't do it. So on the snowflake, we did not sew on that. I took the rickrack just off the edge. So it covers over a little bit, but it is not sewn on the heat and bend. It is far more successful. And the rickrack is purely decorative. Yes. Those edges are sealed because of that adhesive. Now on to finish our Christmas tree with some embellishments. Now to decorate that Christmas tree. We anchored the trunk on with the heat and bond. Off camera, we just stitched down either side of that ribbon to make sure that stays in place. I thought these little tiny buttons would be adorable as ornaments. You cannot sew them on because, again, you can't sew through the heat and bond. So we're going to um, glue them on. And she paused there because that's not normal for this it room. Is not. <laughs> it is not. We are using the hot glue here because you cannot sew through the heat and bond. So we are going to hot glue these buttons on. And it'll be just fine. It will be. I like to embellish with all kinds of things. The button at the top of this is two buttons stacked. We've glued the two buttons together and then hot glued it onto the tree. You can use bits of ribbon, lace, uh, piping, bells, sequins. whatever. Yeah, just whatever you have, play with it. I have a drawer of just little bits of things and they come in super, super handy. So Ashley's going to show us how to hot glue because I do it wrong. I did no. <laughs> She's the master of fabric. I come in handy when it comes to the hot glue. I did not tell her that she did it wrong. I just didn't tell her what my goal with hot glue is. And that is always, I don't want you to know that I used hot glue. And in order to manage that, I have learned that you put the hot glue on the smallest item that you are adhering. Because if you put it directly on the fabric, which is what she would have done, and there's nothing wrong with this, mm -hmm. but you tend to get, you, you use more than you necessarily need, and that's when you get the hot glue oozing outside of that button. None of that happens here because I knew the surface area that I was working with on this button. There is nothing wrong with that. She just asked, why am I doing it this way? The other tip that I would recommend when you are using hot glue, the buttons have holes in them and anything that you for sure could have seepage or touching that glue, you are gonna want some silicone fingers. I've, I have burnt myself plenty of times and they're just, they're a benefit if you still have feeling in them. Very funny. <laughs> 
there you go. There's our finished Christmas tree. As a quick reminder, make sure you do all of the embellishments to the front of your pillow before you put the pillow together. But then after that, the pillowcase is put together the exact same way. So do make sure that you know which direction the front of your panel is going before you layer your envelope because I definitely made that mistake off camera. Our last decorating hack for you has to do with iron-on transfers. And I have some good news for people who don't have their own cutting machine. There are no special vinyls, materials, or heat presses involved in this. Don't forget that you can still get iron-on transfers from places like Amazon or even Dollar Tree. And we bought a huge seasonal pack off of Amazon, which is where ours from our seasonal pillows came from, but it's also the one that we will be showing you as an example. Here's our transfer. The most important part with these is to make sure you get the placement correct. Once you start adhering that, it cannot be moved. So play with it, look at it on your fabric, make sure you get it exactly where you want it to be in the finished product. And that is good because these are supposed to be washable as well. Like right. these aren't just good for pillows, you can definitely use them on shirts. Absolutely, absolutely. As you can see, the opposite side of the transfer is textured, plain colored and textured. That is the side that goes against the fabric. Put that side down, you are ready to go. Double check your placement, take it to the iron, put a pressing cloth over the transfer, have it on a medium setting, and start ironing. You're going to apply some pressure and you're going to spend some time, particularly on the edges and then smaller letters like this. You want to make sure those are really good and sealed down. So just take your time, press over that, make sure that you get all around the edges. So after you've finished on the front side, remove the press cloth, turn it over, and just press right on the fabric on the back. That will just make sure the heat gets all the way through that fabric into the transfer. Make sure now to cool it. This is very important. That is a plastic product, so it has to be cold before you peel off that plastic cover. I usually shake mine around, turn it over, let it sit for a minute. Do not start peeling that off until that is actually cold. Um, if you feel any heat, leave it till it is cold and then begin. Okay, so we're gonna start peeling that off. I usually start on an edge that is straight or a slight curve. And as we started here, you will see right off the bat that the transfer comes up. And I try to stick it down with my thumb, but it is not secure. So if this happens to you, it's not a perfect process. Go right back to the iron and just iron it back down again, give it a little more heat, then cool it again, and then start back peeling again. And then just peel slowly, and as it comes up, use your fingers to press that vinyl down on the fabric as you go through um, the entire transfer. Don't go fast, take your time, go slow, and pull it off till it's all the way removed. Did you notice that when I was ironing it at the first, before I when I took the press cloth off, there was a buckle in the, the plastic covering? Well, there was, and that is because the fabric shrunk as I was attempting to place this transfer. I did pre-shrink the fabric. It is an anomaly. It has not happened to me very often. This is an example of what can go wrong, and this is how to fix it. You look closely at the fabric, you can see that it has shifted. That did cause a crease in the transfer. So what we do is now we're going to take it back over to the iron and we are going to iron over the exact transfer to smooth out those creases. Shouldn't have happened, but it did. So if it does, again, there are these are forgiving. You just have to go back to the heat. So we have made 36 pillow covers. Again, we being very loose there. <laughs> Our decorating is done for the year. Without storing 36 pillows, you're only storing three or however many you wish to make per season. Each month, take down the pillow you have, change the pillow cover, and your decorating is done. Perfect for minimalists or the people that want their decorating done in five minutes. This is a great project for beginning sewers. For your expert sewers, if you have a granddaughter or a daughter you want to help learn to sew, this is a great one. Great gifts. A lot of straight lines, that's about it. And then have fun with fabric and embellishing. I say the fabric's the most fun part. It is. It that's, is absolutely. That's why we're launching during Halloween because it just barely eked out my favorite. Just barely. 
don't forget, you can use any fabric with these. I think this would be really fun with, you know, Harry Potter fabric. You're definitely gonna see that later. So if you are still wondering about those two 21 inch pieces of fabric, what are we gonna do with those? We will show you what we are doing with those, but it's in an Instagram reel. So if you would like to see the table runner project that we make, the reel will be linked in our description down below. Don't ask me for my favorite. I love them all. But we would love to know your favorite. Yeah, Ashley's is Halloween. Big shocker there. Just by a little. But I would love to know which ones you like the best, what fabrics you like the best. Please tell us. We'd love to know. And while, while you're here, if you would like to see more projects like this, we are headed into the holiday season. We have plenty of ideas for you. Please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe on our video because that tells YouTube that it is worth watching. And we will see you in our next video. Take care out there.